I wanted to do a quick uh, recap of last week. And so last week, so we've been talking, of course, over the past uh, five weeks. This is week five of six weeks. Uh, we've talked about singleness, talked about sort of identity in singleness. We've talked about um, purposeful singleness. And then we talked about Sam Albury's book, uh, The Myths of Singleness. So, um, and then, so the past two weeks, we talked about dating. And then last week, specifically, we talked about the purpose of dating. So what is the purpose of dating? And does anyone remember the, the ease, the, the purpose of dating? Off the top of your head. It's okay if you don't. The ease starts with an E. Huh? No, the purpose, uh, essentially the purpose oh. statement. So evaluation. Right. <laughs> evaluation. Hey, I, was, I almost said that, right? Uh, evaluation and not entertainment. All right, so, that, so we talked about that's the purpose of dating is evaluation and not entertainment. So, and then looking for some, uh, some, key, some key things, specifically looking for uh, as we are pursuing uh, a potential dating relationship, we want to be looking for character. We want to be looking for a person of character, and then we also want to be looking for a person with whom we share chemistry, okay? Uh, and then we talked a little bit about uh, breaking a consumer mentality, so not necessarily uh, pursuing a relationship for, um, for, your, for selfish gain or for perhaps like your own, creating your own robot person who can, who can meet your needs, breaking away from that. And then we talked about pursuing uh, at the same pace. So um, I want to, before we, as we, as we kind of start this, and so with next week being our last week, I would uh, just like to open the floor next week if we have some time. I'd love to kind of, uh, as we've ad adapted this framework for dating and singleness, I want for us to, uh, if you have questions or scenarios or something like that, I would like for us to be able to talk about those things. So let's specifically look at, so uh, next week if, if as we, look at some of these things, examine these frameworks. So like questions, so for example, I just a, a scenario would be like, hey, uh, I am, uh, say you are a, uh, a young lady and you are interested in a guy who is a brand new believer. So like what is wise, what is helpful, things like that. So that's what I would encourage. Um, just let's, let's, let's make this as practical as possible. So let's look at, look at scenarios where we could say, hey, look, judging from this framework that we've adapted, okay, how does this, what are some scenarios in which we could kind of actually look at these things and, and apply this thing? So um, uh, what I hope is that we can, once again, this, this can, is, is a lens, kind of a filter for how we can view this idea, how we can view dating, how we can view uh, singleness, okay? So... Um, any questions from last week? Any, any follow-up? Anything that, you, which, that stuck out? Anything that you'd want to discuss before we jump in? Anything at all? All right, okay. Um, so uh, today we're going to look at... We're, we, uh, last week we examined uh, sort of who, the, the who of dating, so who we need to pursue um, and what that needs to look like. And then this week we're looking specifically at... Um, at how, okay? What's that process look like? So we looked at person last week. We'll look at process this week. So preparing for this, I was kind of reminded there's, there's a, there's a uh, I work at, uh, at Crossings, as I've mentioned. It's a, it's a Christian camp. And uh, when I, I first started working there, my first summer there was in 2010. And at the time, there's different activities that you can participate in and that staff facilitate. And at the time, one of those activities was mountain biking. So for the folks who are either, I know some, some of you, some of the folks in here work, they're here now, that is no longer an activity. And I'm getting ready to tell you why. So, uh, no, so mountain biking, it is kind of, there's, there's really two kinds of people who, who enjoy that kind of, who, who kind of mess around with that stuff. So um, there's like, uh, if you're, there's like the bike riders who like, by mountain biking, they mean like a paved path through a park. And that's like, I have a mountain bike that I drive on the road, you know, in this lane, right? And then there's the people that you see on like GoPro commercials, you know, who have like the thing, the stabilizer, and they're like, 
you know, going down the hills at breakneck speeds, uh, certain death scenarios, things like that. So uh, at the time, um, we had this activity, and it was so mountain biking. So during our, our training week, uh, there was a certain group of us that were like, hey, you guys are going to be the ones leading our mountain biking activity. And so uh, knowing nothing about mountain biking, I said, absolutely. That sounds great. <laughs> so I, uh, for, this, uh, for this particular deal, so the guy was like, hey, we're just going to go out, look at the course, and, uh, and, we'll, and, we'll just, we'll, and we'll do the course together. So um, we did, and I was thinking like, oh, so we'll be like a nice, like we'll just kind of follow the road. I was thinking more like option one, you know, and uh, we actually, it was more of option two. And uh, so I uh, in- immediately wreck, um, <laughs> like literally, like we're like, all right, on the trail, boom, and I wreck, because there was this like 90 degree turn, and I was like, this is not what I had envisioned. So I began to realize that I had really gotten myself into a really difficult situation here. And so uh, it was just an absolute disaster. So over the course of this hour long, uh, this hour-long ride, um, we, uh, me and a, a few others, most of the folks were probably my, my speed in terms of overall mountain biking fervor. They were like, uh, this is terrible. And so near the very end, so we're, we've all, at this point, we're all like bleeding and really frustrated, sweaty, and uh, near the end, there was, uh, there was like a, uh, an area where it's like, so you, if you wanted to just kind of finish off, you can go left, and this will take you back to the back to the to the barn area where, where these bicycles are kept. Or you can go right, and there's the last couple obstacles to get through, and then you'll get back to the to your place. So obviously, I uh, was like, well, I'm not going to be the guy who's like, you know what? I'm going to walk. I'm just going to walk the bike back. <laughs> so I uh, proceeded to go the difficult way and crash some more. And, uh, and uh, really, like, I think I ripped my pants, things like that. So overall, good time. So uh, I say that to say, so there, there seems to be, in, in, in the dating world, there seems to be, uh, you know, so the, the people who went left, right, they ultimately, uh, they, we ended up at the same destination, right? So we all got back to where we started from. But uh, the folks who went right were the ones who really ended up showing up bloody and battered and with their pants ripped and just overall just disappointment, okay? So I say that to say that's a lot. Uh, there are, um, in, in, the, in the reality of, our, of, of a dating relationship, uh, the, what, our, what the data around us would show is that most people, are, most people are, they desire marriage, they want marriage, and they are pursuing marriage, but the reality is now that it, people are waiting longer waiting longer to get married, and then they're showing up at their destination kind of battered and bloody and beat up. Does that make sense, right? So that seems to be a pretty common trend in this new, in this new dating reality. So it kind of feels like we're, we're kind of forging through the wilderness in this season with really no equipment, no guide, and we're just sort of showing up like dehydrated and bloodied up at the other side, okay? So... Um, David Brooks is a, a columnist for the New York Times, and he wrote, a, he wrote this, an article that was about this very topic, and he said, um, in, uh, he said, quote, they hit puberty, so we're speaking about, uh, speaking about, about you know, young people entering the dating scene, entering, uh, the, entering into maturity. They said they hit puberty around 13 and don't get married until they are past 30. That's two decades of coupling and uncoupling, hooking up, relationships, and shopping around. This period isn't a transition anymore. It's a sprawling life stage, and nobody knows the rules. So um, once young people, like there was this idea of you just kind of, the, the sort of 1930s, kind of like you just kind of, you know, someone's calling on you, that kind of that mentality, right? So that, that used to be a thing. Then there was dating and kind of this idea of going steady. But now the rules of courtship have kind of dissolved, right? There's really no hard and fast rule, and the rules that, there are, that exist are really constantly changing, all right? So, uh, so he says, uh, the rules of courtship have dissolved. They've been replaced by ambiguity and uncertainty. Cell phones, social media, and text messages uh, give access to hundreds of quote-unquote friends, and that only increases the fluidity, drama, and anxiety. So uh, the experience of getting to know someone 
maybe falling in love with them um, in a dating relationship, that you don't that, that should not be marked by these things. So when you think about your relationships, it's 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 kind of a scary and sad thing to think that a lot of these things nowadays are marked by this fluidity, drama, and anxiety. You know, this is kind of a daunting reality, right? So. Um, while we have so th- that that is true, but we also so we know that um, that's that's really not what we want. We also know that kind of this this uh, th- we can't not, we can't necessarily divorce ourselves from pain in this process. So to be a part of a human relationship is to in some ways be to become vulnerable and to um, you know and to be hurt in some ways. Like if you are in, and that's just I know we mentioned this last week, but. Uh, to be in any sort of relationship is, in some way, making yourself vulnerable to be to be hurt, right? So, someone, if if you are in a relationship with someone for any period of time, it doesn't matter if it's a dating relationship; they will, at some degree, let you down. Okay. However, um, there is a wise path that avoids what could be called needless pain, needless pain, and then wasted anxiety. So, as we as we kind of navigate through what a, uh, a biblical definition and a biblical understanding of dating, that's what we're looking for. So we understand there's going to be pain in this process. We live in a broken world. But we, what we're trying to do is avoid needless pain, wasted anxiety. Does that make sense? You tracking? Does that make sense? Cool. All right. So last week we talked about person to pursue. Now we're going to talk about process of, of finding that person. So uh, much of the stress that's encountered in the modern dating environment is due to two primary causes. So one is lack of intentionality, and the other would be lack of clarity, right? Everybody's like, heard that, right? <laughs> so uh, this is this is I honestly writing this there. I had so many like cringe worthy memories, but uh, so you've likely encountered either personally or maybe consulted with a group of friends in the process of someone likes you or they are pursuing someone you know or something like that. Uh, there, you've probably seen or been a part of this process of people huddling up around a particular person and uh, as they attempt to translate some kind of communication. <laughs> right? You laugh because it's true, okay? So perhaps maybe you're crowded or probably crowded around a computer screen or a telephone, um, and you might hear something like, hey, he asked me to hang out. What does that mean? Right? What does this? What does this mean? Uh, does so? Does does he want me to tag along with his friends, or is this like a romantic thing? Is this like a romantic gesture? Okay. Uh, at the same time, guys might be kind of moaning, like I like this person. Uh, I think it might be too formal to ask her out on a date. That just sounds too formal. That sounds too rigid. Uh, might kind of freak her out a little bit. Okay. So uh, I think I'll just ask her to hang out. Right, um, but what kind of connotations will, will will she you know read into this scenario? You know, so there's a lot of ambiguity, right? There's a lot of you know, and you've probably been in these situations yourself. Where like, what, what is you know, you're con- you're consulting? What does this what does this mean? Okay, so I remember a specific situation when I was in college. Uh, I uh, had uh, I was in a I, so I went to school and uh, church and community group with this with this young lady I was interested in her and uh, long story short she did not she did not share that that uh, that, that that feeling so uh, at the time I was uh, so this was I was in, uh, in in Bible college at the time and so I knew that there was like. The old rules don't apply here. Like this is this is fresh territory, you know. And so I uh, was like, okay, how do I need to do this? So I remember uh, we were uh, going to group. I think it was community group one one evening, and I um, I was like, okay, now's the time to strike. <laughs> so I I uh, I think I went with. I was super like, okay, I don't I don't I don't want to be like, hey, let's let's date. Right, that sounds weird. Don't want to do that. So I was like, "Well, what's the, what's the, you know, hey, can I get your number?" Kind of. Th- that's that was weird as well. Like, so we were already kind of friends in a strange way. So I was like, "Okay, what do I need to do?" So I went with, <laughs> um, I went with, hey, uh, <laughs> I said, hey, after after I think it was after C group. I said, "Hey, 
do you want to get some coffee? You want to get some coffee with me? And uh, brace yourselves. She said uh, in this, in this, in a, and, I, and, I, and in, in my mind, I was like, that's exactly like, it's, it's like, it's like, it's kind of a medium. You know, you're like not going too hard. You're not being super ambiguous. So would you like to get coffee with me? I was like, this is good. This is good. That was good. And so don't all oh, yet. Okay. Uh, so this is her response. So she, she was uh, totally kind, but uh, she said, um, I said, would you like to grab some coffee with me? It seemed like a safe response, it seemed a safe, a safe question. And then her response was sort of the perfect cherry atop this ambiguity Sunday. Uh, she replied very kindly, I'm actually good right now, uh, but please, if you want to get some coffee, feel free. <laughs> So we were actually, so we were right, we were carpooling. So I was, I had given her a ride to group. So I never, I was like, wait for the grimaces. You hate to see it. Uh, so I, uh, at that point, I had committed. And so I was like, you, you don't want anything? Okay. But I wouldn't want to be like, well, me either. So we go to the drive through at, uh, at Starbucks and uh, painfully uh, I sit there and I'm like, I'll have uh, just something. Give me something. And uh, proceeded to just pray for the earth to open and swallow us whole and end that miserable day. So, uh, you know, I say that, it's like in retrospect, I look back and I'm like, that's funny. That's funny. You know, everybody was like, oh, grimace. But, uh, you know, so you can laugh about it. But at the time, like I remember going back to my, my dorm room at the time and then just like laying there. And being like, oh gosh, what have I done? And it was at the time, man. This was like a super. I was. I think I lost sleep over it. I was anxious about it. I was like, man, I just. That was awful. That was awful, right? So, um, it was. It was incredibly, incredibly stressful. But when I, I look back at the root of that, right, the the root of of this was, you know, I understand the reason why we 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 kind of pursue ambiguity, and we kind of blow a lot of smoke. Does that make sense? Like, it makes, it makes sense because it feels safe, right? So we, if, we put your, if you put yourself out there, if you're clear, then you might be rejected. Someone might be like, uh, no, thanks. I'm actually good, but you can have some, <laughs> right? Uh, so what, what happens is, is we kind of, we, kind of, uh, we, we go the, the uh, we pursue ambiguity. We're kind of we're veiled. There's a lot of there's a lot of dist- you know we're, we're not really clear, not really upfront. So we end up kind of floating around, and we are waiting and scheming for something to just sort of fall in our laps, right? So that's what happens. So, but if we if you remember what we talked about last week, we talked about running the race. So we're we're saying we're running the race uh, of faith, of life, of and we're and we're we're pursuing Christ, and we're not just floating around aimlessly. Okay. So we want to be intentional. We want to be clear. So uh, we're going to look at some principles for how to do this well. So just as a reminder, the temptation in this process is, uh, and really all of our, all of the Christian life, is going to be, I need to get my checklist, right? I just need to get my tick list. They're a Christian, check. You know, like uh, they've got a good job, check. You know, and so on. And that can be a really dangerous thing in a relationship and then also in, in your Christian life because uh, I think if we're, if we're honest, that's just not, that's not how human relationships work, okay? So um, we're looking for a, a checklist. We want the, like a step-by-step program. But what we're, we're looking at in, in, uh, in the next few minutes here is we want to look at principles, not just a, a program, but we're looking at principles for how to ground this. So Ben, uh, ben Stewart, who's, who's writing this book that we're basing this off of, is... Um, he uses a great example to illustrate this, and he says that we, what we really want is we want to build IKEA furniture when what the, the task in front of us is more like uh, sailing across the ocean, All right? So what, is, what does he mean by that? So when you, when you go to IKEA, which, a brief aside, if you want to put your relationship to the test, go to IKEA, <laughs> All right? That's the truth. I should have just skipped all of last week's lesson and just be like, how do you know? Go to IKEA. And if, you're, if you survive at the end, then, like, you got it, All right? So if you haven't been, it's just, it's, uh, it's just uh, a Swedish-made maze filled with cheap furniture, and you just kind of wander around in a circle and find your way on the other side like 10 hours later, okay? So, uh, so when you go to Ikea, so you aren't, when you go there, right, you're not being like, I wonder if there's someone who can help me give some general principles about furniture building, 
you know? Like, what is it? Like, is, is a white oak a good material to build a desk out of? I don't know, you know right? You're not asking that, right? You're, you're, you're saying, I need a table, right? So you get in your car, you go to Ikea, you find the table section, and you pick out a nice, you know, spiribin <laughs> table, right? You find your table, you take it home, you follow the step-by-step -step instructions, you put it together, right? <laughs> Joshua, who's a craftsman, is like, no, that's, ter that's terrible, right? So, but the point, the point is, is like, you don't have a table, you follow the steps, voila, now you have a table. Does that make sense? And if we're honest, that's really what we want, you know? Not just in relationships. Isn't that true of our walk with Christ as well? Like, I'm not really, I'm not a strong Christian, so give me the checklist of this, 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 and now, bam, I'm a strong Christian, right? So um, human relationships are much too dynamic for this kind of copy and paste kind of mentality, okay? So when, you, uh, when you're looking at this, it's more helpful to think of it as you're not building a table here. You're, it's like crossing the ocean. So let me, let me elaborate on that a little bit. So when you are crossing the ocean, there's, there's really no, you know, there's no turn-by-turn -turn directions. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's no turn-by-turn -turn directions. If someone gave you like a step-by-step -step book of here is, you know, how to cross the ocean, it really would just be a history lesson on that one time they crossed the ocean, right? There's no guarantee, there's no understanding of like, well, that's true. Maybe they had like smooth sailing blue skies all the way through. But there's really no, there's, but for you, that might not be so, Right? You might have rock and shoals and all these other issues that are, that are going to take place that are going to affect the way that you, that you cross. So um, principles really might save your life. Not a step-by-step, -step, but a principle of how. So the knowledge of how to use a compass and find true north, how to navigate using the stars. Like Those are principles that when you're sailing across the ocean, it's like you need these things these principles, these guiding principles, more than you really need a step-by-step, -step, you know, instruction booklet, if that makes sense, okay? So, while principles, they don't eliminate risk of storms, they can guide you safely through a dynamic and dangerous environment. Does that make sense? All right? So, let's, uh, let's look at some principles uh, of, how to, of how to date. So, we looked at who to date, now we're looking at how, how to go about this, how to date. So, uh, number one, the key thing we need to look at is we need to date prayerfully, okay? You need to pursue a dating relationship prayerfully, okay? So last week, uh, we talked about uh, dating in the context of a community, a community of believers, you know? And so we talked a little bit afterwards about how if there is, if you're in a situation where you're, you're dating in isolation, Right? You're dating someone, you don't really want your friends to know, you don't want your family to know. Right? That's a red flag. Right? But to deceive yourself into thinking that God does not know, like God is not mocked, He's, God knows what's going on. Right? So you need to pursue, if you, are, if you are pursuing a dating relationship, you need to do so prayerfully. So and, and get, digging a little bit deeper into that is that you are actively inviting God in on this process. You are actively saying, Lord, give me wisdom. Give me, uh, uh, give me what I need. Father, help me to, to resist temptation. Help me to, to, to communicate clearly, right? You need to pursue dating prayerfully. Because, um, you know, if you're, I know as we just looked at, most of our, a lot of these decisions that we make, some of the reasons that we do the things that we do are we're driven by fear. We're driven by anxiety. And what we do, a beautiful thing about when we pray is that we are, you know, it says in First Peter, we're casting our anxieties on the Lord, you know? So in many ways, what prayer does is it allows us to say, hey, <laughs> I'm trusting in you, Lord, I'm trusting that you are going to be the one who's going to see this thing through or you'll guide me somewhere else. So I don't need, I don't need, therefore, to like enter some manipulation mode to like fool this and trick this person into liking me, you know? I don't need to do this, right? So that is why we need to, I need to rest in him. I need to, I don't need to scheme and manipulate. And I would rather, ultimately, I would rather be not in a relationship and in, 
not in relationship with, with another person, but in right relationship with God, then in a meaningless relationship outside of a relationship with God. Does that make sense? Right? So you need to pursue dating prayerfully, inviting God in on the process, because he already knows. <laughs> that's the thing that's so crazy about this is where it's not like, all right, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll show you my hand here, right? God already knows. So be honest, be open, and pursue, and pursue that process saying, hey, this is, I'm prayerfully pursuing someone. Okay, that makes sense? Anybody have any questions about that? No? Okay, good. All right, so number two, we need to date with clarity. Okay, so we want to date prayerfully, and we want to date with clarity. So uh, let's say you're running the race, and you're serving the Lord. You're involved with the ministries of your church, and uh, you kind of come, up, uh, come upon somebody and you're thinking, I'd like to get to know them a little bit better, right? So what do you do? Well, you need to pursue. This is a good thing, as we, as we looked at. These are a, this is a good thing. This isn't a, a trap or a, tr- a trick question, right? I, man, I, this person, I'd like to get to know them better, so I need to pers- I want, I'd like to pursue them, and you need to do so with clarity. So Christ followers should be characterized by speaking the truth in love and not by playing manipulative games. Right? You tracking with me? Does that make sense? So one of the things, I don't know, I don't know if you have any, if there are any office watchers in here, but uh, thank you. Right? So the, and uh, it's, uh, there's a scene, I forget when it is in the office, but Andy Bernard, this guy, this character, Andy Bernard, he uh, is giving, I think, dating advice to, I think it was Kevin or something, one of these guys, and he's saying like, uh, so Kevin's like, so I need, do I need to like, you know, say hi to her? He's like, No! Don't say hi to her. Don't even look at her, you know? So he's, uh, he's like, so, it, it, he's, he's like, okay, so what is that? What, what should I do next? He's like, yeah, for one, after your date, don't call her, right? Don't talk to her. Let her, you know, so it, she's like, it's, 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 she's growing endearing, right? So this is, this is a good thing, right? And uh, so, I mean, we laugh at that, but it's like, we're, we're not trying to play games, right? As a Christ follower, we're not trying to like, okay, I'm going to like, say something, withdraw myself, let them ruminate. It's like, no, we, we're, we want to be clear, we want to be upfront, we want to be honest, we want to be speaking the truth in love and be characterized by that, okay? Now, listen, so clarity and honesty does not necessarily mean that I am, like, just going all in, all right? So I'm not just dumping everything I'm thinking onto this person. So like we discussed last week, one of the extremes we want to avoid is, you know, hello, my name is such and such, I think we should get married, right? We, that's generally... I think it works for some people. I think, like, basically that's what Herschel and Tanya did. <laughs> you know, it worked out well for them. Uh, but just in general, uh, I, would have, I would advise maybe some caution there, right? Okay? So um, uh, full disclosure is necessary at some point, but not necessarily this point. But you should definitely try to, to avoid ambiguity, right? You want to avoid uh, uncertainty. So uh, uh, after I, you know, I talked about this last week, but after I sort of declared my intentions of wanting to date Leah, um, if you remember, her response was, oh, that's so great. So are we dating? <laughs> right? So that's a great example of what not to do, okay? Um, so, but think about this. So think about the last time you were in a car and then someone said, where are we? Right? Where are we right now? That doesn't necessarily fill you with confidence, does it? Okay, and that's the same is true of a dating relationship. If, you're, if you are in a context where you're thinking, I'm in a re- relationship with someone, and I don't know where we are, right? That's a scary place to be. That's not a good place to be, okay? Um, so uh, much of this anguish in, in modern dating could be alleviated if we could just kind of muster up the courage, be gracious, and kindly tell each other what we're thinking. Wow, so right, you know, isn't that, what, what a revelation that is, okay? So um, at the root of this issue, we're, what, we, what we're often going to find is just a lack of leadership, right? So if there's ambiguity, if there's a lot of this stuff going on, then really what you can trace it down to is there's a lot, there's going to be a lack of leadership. Uh, so, and this continues to be a challenge for and a response to be borne in a lot, in large part by guys. Just to be honest with you. Guys want me to put you on blast, but I, I kind of do, Right? So a lot, of this, a lot of this uncertainty, this ambiguity, is because, and not, not, not I'm, painting, I'm painting in broad strokes here, but in large part, it's because there's a failure of leadership. 
there's a failure of saying, I'm going, here, I, I'm, I'm going to, to be clear with you. I'm going to just be open and honest and upfront, okay? So I want to look at this specifically in, in, in three areas here. So we need, we need clarity. We need clarity, and clarity is vital in, initi- in initiation, okay? So think about this. So this was an interesting study. In, in 2012, a national survey indicated that only 12% of American women asked anyone out the previous year. So only 12% of American women asked someone out the previous year. So whatever you know, our modern society thinks about roles and dating and things like that, the data would seem to suggest that women want men to initiate. Right? As much as you think, like, no, we're the same. You know, this is the exact same. We're just you know, on the same playing field here. It's like, no, the data would show and suggest that women want men to initiate. Right? Research also suggests that women prefer men to ask them out in person. So this was interesting. Texting came in second, and calling came in third. Go figure. <laughs> right? So it feels like it's like, I want in person, or the most impersonal thing possible. <laughs> you know, right? So does that make sense? So uh, once again, because there is this, we, we, we we're sort of hiding behind, it's easy it's, it's easy to hide behind ambiguity. It's easy to hide behind some sort of, you know, facade where it's like, I can put myself out here. If I get rejected, then I won't be like, oh, I didn't mean that. Yeah, that's not what I meant. Was, I was texting you. It's hard to convey tone, right? So, like, that is, we want to avoid that, right? We want to avoid. So this is, this is something that, it's, and it's funny to me that the very thing that I feel like guys, uh, once again, not, not, not exclusively, but I think there's a lot of things that guys are like, I'm afraid I'm making this too formal. And it seems that the data would suggest that what actually is wanted and desired is a little bit more formality. Right? Does that make sense? So the very thing that we're trying to run from and get away from is the very thing that's, that is felt like it's needed. You know? Any questions about that so far? No? Okay, good. Okay, so... Um, it was also discovered that women almost universally hate being invited to hang out when they are asked on a date. <laughs> Big shocker, right? Okay? So a, a quote from this study was, is, uh, a, a woman said, use the word date so I at least know what I'm getting into. <laughs> right? So for all of our fear of formality, it seems like this is the better, this is the better plan. And why? It's not necessarily because it's formal. It's because it's clear. We're being honest. We're being open and upfront. We're not saying like we're not leaving you in some sort of like weird neutral zone, right? We're we're being clear. We're saying, hey, would you like to go on a date? <laughs> and it's not like so like with your buds. Like what does that mean, right? So we're, we want to avoid that. Secondly, uh, so we want to clear. So clarity is vital in initiation. And then another thing is that men and women alike want clarity in this process. This is not just something that is unique to 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 a woman, right? Men and women alike, we want clarity in this process. So, um, I don't know. All right, guys, if you, are, if you are interested in someone, I know the temptation. I know we, we, we laughed about this story at my expense, right, of me bumbling this coffee thing, right? But if you are interested in someone, the temptation is always going to be, how do I, like, zhuzh this thing up a little bit? How do I, how can we like add layers of complication to this thing? You know, because heaven forbid we would just actually say what we mean, right? So if you are interested in someone, don't overcomplicate it. Don't try to be all suave, just ask. You know? Shocker, right? So as we so this is a good thing. We want clarity in the process. So for example, hey, I've got an ABC event or whatever at my work that I'm going to. I'd love to, I'd love. If, if you would come as my date. That's a perfectly good example, right? <laughs> too, too straightforward. What's going to happen with all this clarity, right? No, that's, that's a perfectly acceptable thing to say, right? So I, and I, I know this because I vetted it with my wife. <laughs> you know, so for some reason, we've, we've tricked ourselves into thinking that, like, no, we got to keep this thing, like, kind of obscure, kind of hidden, Right? We, don't, we don't need to be upfront. We don't need to be honest. So, ladies, if you want to go with this person who says, hey, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm, I'm going to this event. Would you like to come as my date? If you want to go, you should go. Imagine that, right? Um, you don't, and if you don't, just say, no, thank you. 
No thanks. It's kind of, thanks for the invite, but no, no thanks. Right? Right? Um, if you need to, if you feel the need to fabricate some excuse, to be like, oh man, I totally would, but my sister's cousin's niece's dog is uh, going to be sick that day. <laughs> you know, if you feel the need to fabricate something, if they like you, then they'll be like, okay, I'll try again next time. And then you're off to fabricate story number two, right? Be honest, be clear, and, that, and also that's lying, so that's bad, <laughs> right? So be honest, be clear, and, and be direct, Right? I think one of the again one of the big a big theme to all this stuff is a huge uh, a huge uh, source of anxiety is just the fact that no one knows what's going on, no one knows what's going on. Okay, being honest and so, so this 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 leads um, to you need to be gracious and you need to assume the best about them. And then if someone does, if you ask someone say, hey, I'd like to I'd like to take you on a date, and if they say no, thank you, that is not a a verdict on your character. That's not a verdict on your, on your personality or anything like that. It's just, that's fine, okay? So we need to posture ourselves in such a way where we're saying, me, 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 you saying no is not a rejection of my soul. It's just, you are being honest and open and direct, okay? So we need to, and in some ways, that's probably gonna sting a little bit, but we need to be okay with saying, that's okay. All right, thanks. Thanks for telling me, right? All right. Um, uh, ambiguity is uncomfortable. So uh, one of the things that uh, working at a camp is that one, after, at the, end of every <laughs> at the end of every summer, right, we end our time uh, around the 1st of August, there's always uh, a group of people who are the, we call them like the DTRers, right? The people who are like, they, they're a parent, they've paired up, over the course of the summer, and they're going to, on August 1st, they're going to define the relationship. They're going to pursue this person and be like, hey, I really like you, you know, and they're going to, and they're going to put it all out there. So we, you know, I feel like that's, a, that's such a Christian, Christianese term of, of, of a DTR, defining the relationship, but like, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You don't want to end up somewhere being like, well, I guess we're dating now, huh? That's a bad place to be, right? You need to be saying, okay, hey, this is, this is, what, this is what I am. This is, I've, I, mean, I really enjoy getting to know you. I'd like to continue to get to know you on a, on a deeper level, and I'd like to take you out to dinner, right? That's clear, that's honest, and that's up front, right? So, um, another thing, if you are enjoying your time with them, tell them, Okay? Um, hey, I really enjoy spending time with you. They're one of the, another, another huge issue is that as, over the course of a dating relationship, there's this, there's this strange thing of like, okay, well, I'm just going like, to go nose blind to these things. T- talk about it. Tell them, hey, I really enjoy spending time with you, and I'd like to keep spending time with you. Right? Guys, that's not creepy. You know? So, uh, so Ben, in, in, in the book, he says, he, he, he would, uh, they would have a date. He would, she would be getting ready to, to get out of the car, and he would say, hey, um, I really enjoyed spending time with you today. I'm not ready to get married in the next six months, <laughs> but I'm also not wasting your time either. So I would like to keep calling if you're interested. Right? That's simple. That's not like, it's not like, you know, script from some sort of, you know, Romantic comedy, right? But it's it's honest and it's upfront and it's upfront and it's direct. Okay, so that leads us to our last little our our last topic of of, of clarity. When we're looking at clarity, okay, clarity in how to exit. Okay, we talked about this a little bit last week. If you're honest and you're upfront, you also need to be honest and upfront if this thing needs to end. Right. I know no one really wants to talk about that, but it's, it's entirely possible that in the process, so we're talking about, so what's the purpose of dating? It's evaluation. So it's entirely possible over the course of evaluating a relationship, evaluating, say, hey, this person, they're, they're a person of character, that we, I, we, and we have chemistry. But it also might be true that you get down the road, and it's like, you know what? I think you're a great person of character. You love the Lord. I see, I see God at work in you, but we just, we're not clicking. 
We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't really share any chemistry. That's okay, right? So you need to, to, to provide clarity in, um, in, even from the beginning as you initiate this thing to provide a way to say, hey, if you ever feel like this is, like this is just, man, you, 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 you would not want to continue, you don't want, you don't want to continue uh, this relationship, then you need to give each other permission to say, hey, you can graciously bow out. That's okay, right? So one of the reasons that breakups are nasty is because if you think about it, there's, there's, there's likely been a total lack of clarity and then one party ends up getting blindsided, right? So that's one of the reasons this, is, this can be incredibly painful and awkward is because there was no upfront communication. There was no level of saying, hey, um, if you feel like this is not gonna, if, if you feel like you don't wanna move forward, I give you I would encourage you, and I would, I would, I would, I would ask of you that you would just say, "Hey, let's 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 kind of go our separate ways here." Okay, that makes sense, right? Okay. So one thing that I remember, uh, there was many, looking back on a, on a dating relationship, there's many things I did not do well, but that was that was one thing that I was grateful for, and I, in, in retrospect, Leah was thankful as well. Was I told her from the beginning, "Hey." I think in my bumbling way, I think that I think that dating, the end goal of dating should be to marriage. And if you ever feel in this process like you could not marry me, or if I ever feel like I could not marry you, then I'll tell you. Right? That's maybe that's maybe you think, oh, that's kind of morbid, right? Maybe that's but that's honestly, I would rather have that expectation on on up front. Right? If I because what and because what, what's the alternative? Right. Let's, let's examine the alternative. Is if you're saying, "Hey, um, you know," if you're not saying, I, I, "I'm going to give you an easy out," an easy out here. You're going what, to what's going what what ultimately is going to end up happening is that you're going to end up staying in a relationship longer than you need to stay, and then one person is probably going to be blindsided. It's going to lead to a lot of pain. It's going to lead to a lot of hurt, in a way that could have that could have been avoided if you would just be clear, just be honest and open. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, all right. Um, let's look at uh, let's look at number three here. Okay, so we want to date with uh, we want to date prayerfully, we want to date with clarity, and we want to date with autonomy. Okay, so what do I mean by that? So many many aspects of of our life can be divided uh, and kind of be parsed out by really in terms of responsibility and privilege. Does that make sense? Right? So what I mean, so like for example, um, you're like, a, you get your driver's license, right? You get your driver's license. What is that? That is an example of, hey, you are taking on responsibility of maybe buying a car by <laughs> hopefully abiding by the laws of the road, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Subtweet. Um, uh, but what is the alternative, right? So, so that, that's a responsibility. And then the privilege that comes along with that is what? Some independence. You go where you want to go. Your mom doesn't have to cart you around everywhere, right? That's good, right? So there's responsibility. And then there's also privileges that come with that, right? So, I mean, even on a more basic level, like you have a job, right? So if you have a job, you have responsibilities, you know, if you have a job where you just get privileges, then let me know where you work, please. No, if you have a job, okay, so that's part of it, right? So part and parcel is that you a job is responsibility, but there's also privileges that come with that. So a paycheck, vacation days, things like that, right? So you tracking? Does that make sense? Okay. So um, while these categories, so so we're look, we're look, as, we, as we look at responsibility and privilege, these categories are 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 more well-defined, more clear in the context of marriage, right? There's certain responsibilities that are very clear, and there are certain privileges that are clear. Does that make sense? Okay? However, a difficult thing about a dating relationship is that these lines can get super blurry, right? So it can be really confusing to say, okay, so what is my responsibility to you, and what are the privileges that we that we have in this in this relationship, okay, 
right? So that's something that's, that's going to be, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's, that is a difficult, those are, those are difficult waters to navigate, okay? Um, so for example, so right now, Leah, my wife, has a right to know where I am. She has the right to know my schedule. She has the right to, to, to my wallet. Like, I mean, everything, everything that I have is hers, right? So, however, when we were dating, that was not true. Does that make sense? Right? So when we were, when, so, right, so now I have the responsibility, even on, on, on a spiritual level, so I have, phys, I have some really tangible, physical, like I am called to provide for our family on, the, on, a, on, a, on a higher kind of spiritual plane is like, man, the Lord is holding me accountable for the welfare of her soul. You know, if you look about this, that if you, um, where was it? Where, it, it that, this is for a husband I mean, to, to not care for and love your wife in an understanding way. I think it's, is that First Peter? That, uh, man, it can, you can, um, it'll hinder your prayers. So scripture is very clear about this. If, 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 you're, not, if you're not taking this seriously, it's actually going to hinder your prayers. Okay, so that's a, those are real responsibilities. Those are tangible, physical, real respons- re- responsibilities, and then there's also privileges that come with that. So, but when you are dating, that is not so. A difficult thing that we that you are going to encounter, one of the most dangerous things that you are going to encounter in a dating relationship, is acting like you're married. Right? Make sense? So, to be in a to be in a position, so because things can, you can get really possessive, you know. There can be some really unclear lines of like, so what am I, like, how am I responsible for you? What does this, what does this look like? Um, dating someone does not give you unrestricted access to them. Okay, does that make sense? If you're dating someone and they demand all of your time, your resources, and attention, that is a massive red flag. Okay? So guys, you are called to lead, provide, and protect your wife not women in general, right? Got it? Ladies, you are called to love, honor, and respect and submit to your husbands, not men in general. Make sense? Okay? So while you are, so there's, there, cause there's, this, there's this blurred line between, so you, so you are dating you are in, and you are in a relationship, but you have not covenanted together. You are not one flesh. You are still two autonomous people, right? God is not, uh, so on, on, on another practical level, so this is something, another, another, another Bible college thing. So when I was in, when I, so I was uh, a relatively, I was a really immature believer when I, when I went to school. And so uh, I had not been in a godly relationship. And so one of the things that was immediately brought to, brought to mind was that there seemed to be an expectation amongst like the, my peers who were ladies is that like, I want to date someone who's going to be my spiritual leader, right? Good thing in a husband, right? You want a spiritual leader as your husband, but your boyfriend is not called to be your spiritual leader, right? Your, and, and guys, that was the one thing I was like, oh my gosh, I need to like turn into John Piper and I'm, you know, 20 years old, right? So that's just, don't, don't feel that burden because honestly, and I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be too too hard on you here, but like honestly, you're probably going to have a hard enough time caring and shepherd and, and looking for your your own soul, right? Much less like I'm good, I, I'm now responsible as in a dating relationship to like to shepherd the soul of my girlfriend, right? God has not called you to do that, right? And that needs to be an area of expectation up front where you're so. But so the, another thing that, that that goes along with this is it does benefit you to encourage and to acknowledge and to make sure that this is happening. You want to be sure that they are growing, that they are in a thriving, ongoing personal relationship with Jesus, right? That's good. That's going to benefit you down the road, especially ultimately if the the goal is marriage, that's going to be very beneficial to you, right? But it is not your responsibility in a dating relationship, right? Okay. Okay. so once again, so one of the most dangerous things that you can do in a dating relationship is act like you are married. On a physical, on, the, on a physical plane, on a spiritual plane, on an emotional plane, there needs to be distinct 
boundaries. There needs to be distinct uh, understanding of, no, hey, you, you don't get to, like, call my schedule. <laughs> you know? <laughs> that is, that's just not a thing that, that's, that's not a healthy place to be, right? There needs to be healthy boundaries, and there needs to be some understanding of this. No, we are two autonomous people, okay? God is holding us responsible for our individual decisions at this point. We're not, we're not making this, uh, this is not a joint bank account, right? Right? If you're not paying their cell phone bill, you probably shouldn't be held accountable for their spiritual well-being as well. Okay? Make sense? So privilege, responsibility. This is an area where I feel like there's a lot of ambiguity and there needs to be some clear, defined expectation. Anybody, any questions about that? I know that's, that's kind of a big, broad topic. Anything like that? Responsibility, privilege. Everybody good? Okay, sweet. All right. Number four, so we want to, so we, going back again, we want to date prayerfully, we want to date uh, with clarity, we want to date with autonomy, and number four, we want to date with purity. So perhaps the biggest distinctive between a biblical worldview and the popular view of the culture is our understanding of purity and sexuality. Okay? First of all, let me say, I want to say clearly, unequivocally, that God's design for sexuality is between one man, one woman, specifically in the context of marriage. That is, that is God's design. And whenever we operate outside of God's design, it's always going to lead to pain. It's always going to lead to brokenness. Okay? And that's always going to be so. There's really no, there's no exceptions to that. Okay? All right, so our culture is going to bombard us with messages that, so on one side, they're going to say sex is just a physical act. This is just a physical act. It's no more sacred than eating a meal, right? This is just a, you are hungry and therefore you eat. There's nothing more to it, okay? So, so in, the, in, 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 in that line of thinking, so if you're depriving yourself of it, if it's just a physical act, it's preposterous. It doesn't make any sense. If you saw someone who's like, I haven't eaten in years, you're like, well, you're dead, <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know? So the culture's view of this is just saying, hey, this is, why would, you, why would you deprive yourself of this? This is a physical need, okay? So they're saying, not a, not a big deal, just a, physical, just a physical impulse, not a problem. Simultaneously, being no big deal, the culture, the, that the, the message the culture gives us is also that your sexual expression is the pinnacle of your identity, Right, your sexual expression is the pinnacle of your identity as a human being. So, if you are not expressing yourself sexually, are you even living? Right, you see this like one of the biggest things as we look at biblical singleness is that I, there, there seems to be this mentality of like you can't ask someone to be single and and not be involved in a sexual relationship. That's just too much. You can't do it. Right, and man, have we missed the boat on that? Man, have we, have we just fundamentally misunderstood this thing, okay? So simultaneously, not a big deal, but yet it's the, it's the pinnacle of your identity. It's the pinnacle of you, of you being a human being, okay? So it's no different than eating a bag of chips, and it's the most important thing about you, right? Those are two conflicting messages. But those are both things that are being peddled to us on a day-to-day -day basis from our culture, okay? So that's what we're not looking at, okay? Scripture, however paints a different picture. So Paul, in 1 Corinthians 6, he talks about sex as becoming one body. So while a physical act, God also created it to be a deeply emotional and spiritual act. And in its proper context, God designed sex to be a bonding agent between a husband and a wife. It's a privilege to be enjoyed in the context of of the responsibility of a loving and committed relationship to each other, right? I forget this. Chris Parrish and I were talking about this, but there was a, I think it was some sort of, uh, maybe it was the New York Times, or there was some sort of podcast or something like that where these, uh, these people were talking about uh, sexual abuse specifically in, in the context of a college campus, you know? And so a person, um, a person had this idea, and they said, what if I think one of the solutions that we need to be pursuing is we need to talk about uh, just a binding agreement. A bind Before you enter into a, a sexual encounter with someone, you need to have like a signed, you know, uh, agreement where you are, you know, 
where you are showing uh, there's safety involved, you're showing that there is um, consent involved, and you're, so you're, you're agreeing this, uh, in this together and for, for, us, for, for safety, you know, and so this is what we should be pursuing. And someone's response was like, I thought that was what marriage was, <laughs> right? So in this, in, this, in this mad rush to be like, how do we make this thing that's going to be a huge problem, how do we like make it safe? How do we do that? If only we knew, <laughs> You know, and when the reality is, is God has designed it from the beginning. This is thing. This thing. This is a. This is a privilege to be enjoyed within the context of responsibility. The responsibility of, of a loving, covenanted, man and woman, right. So. You can imagine how introducing this, introducing sex into a evaluation process, how that might distort the process of evaluating whether or not someone is a good companion for your life, right? If you're evaluating whether someone is a good, is, will be a good companion for you and you introduce that into the equation, man, that's going to be, it's going to be difficult. That's going to, that's going to be a road towards a lot of, of potential heartbreak, a lot of regret, and honestly, it causes you to not be able to evaluate in a way that you need to, Right? So on a spiritual and even a physiological, a, a bonding is happening, right, in this process. And a dangerous thing is that y- you do not want to be forming these emotional, spiritual, and physical bonds to someone who will not be your spouse. It distorts your ability to evaluate if this person will be a good friend. It makes you stay longer in relationships that you should not be in and it makes breakups incredibly painful, okay? There are a few things more painful than giving a piece of yourself to somebody who is not the right somebody, you know? So be careful, right? Song of Songs, it tells us not to arouse and awaken love until it pleases. Don't go waking this thing up before it's time, right? Put safeguards in place. This is gonna be, this is gonna be tough, Right? This is going to be really hard because the temptation is going to be like, this is not going to happen to me. This is not going to happen to me. Okay? You need to put safeguards in place. There, it is a good thing to be overly cautious. Right? It is a good thing to, to I mean, honestly, to even say, I am not going to be in, I'm not going to be alone with you. Right? While we're, while we're dating, I'm not going to be we're not going to be like hanging out in my bedroom alone, okay? Man, you take heed lest you fall, right? This, isn't, this is something that, I mean, honestly, it, it's just, it, has a, it, it affects so many. It has a, and, and you, man, you need to be careful, right? You need to put barriers in place. Be, over, be overly zealous, Right? Because honestly, you're going to be like you probably make compromises, so be overly zealous. Okay, one of the one of the, one of the one of uh, the most kind and gracious things that uh, that a friend has ever done to me is that when Lee and I were dating, he um, uh, we were I was living in a house with a couple other, with a couple other guys, and the guy who owned the house he said, "Hey man, love Leah, love you. You guys can't be alone together in the house." Right, I didn't really want to hear that. You know, but that was a good and kind thing for him to do. Right, it was a good and kind thing for him to say, "Man, this is going to be a problem. This is going to be a tough area. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'll be the bad guy here and be like, "Hey, you need to be careful." Okay. Right. So you need to understand this is dangerous. But ultimately, while you are not defined by your sexual expression, you're also not defined by your sexual failure, okay? It's really important. I know there are people in this room who have been, who've been burnt by this, who maybe you've been hurt, or maybe you've hurt someone else in this way. Please, I want you to, to, to know that you are not defined by this, okay? 
Christ can redeem brokenness. He stands ready to forgive. We are all broken. We need to repent and turn to him, okay? Uh, one, of the, one, one of my favorite stories about this, Herschel, I think this was, I think this was Michael when Michael was, um, was just a you know, young kid. Uh, Herschel, and I don't know how he gets this stuff. He's, 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 he's good. <laughs> but Herschel told him one night, so I think this was, you know, yeah, I, I'm not sure how he set the table for this, but he said, hey, um, you know, hey, if you, uh, they're, getting, they're, they're getting ready to go to bed, and he told, I think he told Michael, he said, hey, um, if you I'll wake up in the middle of the night and you get thirsty, uh, go ahead, just walk down the hall, walk down the hall to uh, the bathroom and take your cup and just dip it in the toilet and uh, just get some water. <laughs> and, uh, and Michael's like, <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that. He's like, well, why not? It's, it's closer. You know, it's easier. The alternative is Going, going all the way down the stairs, going to the kitchen, opening the cabinet, taking a glass of water. Like, yeah, that's, that's a lot of work, right? And he's like, but Dad, I can't do that. Because I'm like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, it's not good for me. I might get sick, you know? And, and the wisdom, you know, is like, yeah, you're right. You know, it's closer. It's more convenient. It's going to be really tempting. But ultimately, man, if you will wait. If you will wait, if you will, if you will understand that this is a, a good gift, then you can say, no, I, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till tomorrow. I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning. <laughs> I'm going to wait till the time is right. Okay? There's always, the Lord, man, there's always a way of obedience. There's always a way of obedience. Okay? All right. So, um, Date with purity. Date and pursue purity. So the next step we're gonna, we'll look at uh, number five. So we want to date graciously. Okay? So let's say you are attracted to someone and you discover they're interested in you as well. Okay? So now what? A couple options here. Should you, A, activate salesman mode and enter into an extended campaign to, pursue, uh, to persuade someone to fall in love with you? <laughs> Option A, okay? B, should you transform into some sort of romantic, endlessly creative, Fabio-esque, you know, love interest, right? Or maybe you're going to go to the other end of the spectrum. Maybe you say, I'm gonna, not going to do anything. I'm going to do nothing. In an attempt to preserve the real me, I'm going to just put forth zero effort, sit here on the couch, and watch TV. And if they say anything, I'm just going to say, hey, this is the real me. You know, too bad. This is the real me. I'm just going to like be totally true to myself, right? So the answer is, I mean, of, co- of course not. You're, you're, you're not going to do that stuff, right? Hopefully, right? So you're not meant to do these things. You should put forth an effort, okay? You should not take on a whole new persona, whole new responsibilities, okay? Your identity is going to determine your activity. So God has made you in his image. So with this, so this process of evaluation, God's made you in his image, He's made you to reflect his goodness and grace to those around you. So what's the goal? How do you date graciously? And the answer is the goal should be to treat someone you date in such a way that regardless of whether or not this dating relationship ends in marriage, that person should be a better person and more like Christ as a result of your influence. Okay? Treat someone in such a way, date in such a way that regardless of whether, or regardless of the outcome, whether you end in marriage or whether you go your separate ways, that person is going to be a better person, more like Christ, as a result of your influence. Okay. This this got me. This got me good. Okay. Let's be honest. If if you see an ex, you're far more likely to like avoid avoid eye contact and then maybe mutter to one of your friends like they're the worst. You know. I'm w- you're way more prone to do that. I have never heard someone be like, man, I grew so much while I dated that person. Didn't work out. Didn't work out. Wasn't a good fit. We didn't really drive on some things. But man, I feel like I grew so much. I was always encouraged, always spurred on to godliness whenever we, whenever we were in a dating relationship. I've never heard that. Right? But shouldn't that be the goal? Especially if you're, if you're in Christ, that... 
Man, it's, it's, that, that, that's almost laughably unheard of, but shouldn't that be so? Like, oh, you know, we're, I'm entering in this, into a dating relationship, and at the end of the day, I want it to be said, just because you've been in proximity to me and my pursuit of God, it has been a blessing to you. So regardless of the outcome, it is going to be a blessing to you, a blessing to your soul to have known someone, to have walked alongside them for a short while, and then maybe you parted ways. But that's the, that's the goal, okay? If you are leaving a trail of broken hearts and confused people everywhere you go, you need to reevaluate what you're doing, right? You need to aim to bless a person, not just to Im- impress a person. So let that be our goal. As you are pursuing a dating relationship, you're not just trying to look good for someone. You're trying to bless someone. Because ultimately... This person, this, this is, they are an image bearer just like you, right? And if you, if you abuse, if, you, if in this context, and you sin against that person, you're going to be held accountable to God. If someone, if someone, you know, I've got a little girl, if someone does something against her, they've got to answer to me, right? And the same is true of of our relationship with Christ. As, as, if, we're, if we're pursuing someone, you're either married to them or they're your sister in Christ. <laughs> right? So you need to act accordingly. All right? And move in such a way where you can say, hey, regardless of how this thing ends, you want to, I want to bless you, I want to sanctify you, and I want to encourage you, encourage you and push you towards godliness. Okay? So we want to date graciously. Okay? We talked a little bit about this last week, but we want to date. Number six, we want to date within community. Proverbs eleven fourteen says, where there is no guidance, a people falls, but in an abundance of counselors, there is safety. Y'all, romantic feelings can be intoxicating, so it is very dangerous to put yourself in a position where you are making decisions in isolation. And it's an incredibly dangerous thing. You need people in your life who are going to love God, who love you, and who will tell you exactly what they think. Right? And then, because I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, the, the, the temptation is going to be like you, well, and, and then this, honestly, this is going to cause you to, to look at your friends. Do you have the kind of friends who will tell the truth to you? Do you have someone in your life who would say, hey, man, I, I love you. I love you. That's not a good thing. This, thing. this relationship you're in, not good. So do you have someone like that who would tell you the truth, right? Do you have someone who, or, or, or do you, is there anyone who's even close enough to you to, to make that call, right? If there's not, there needs to be, right? So dating in the context of a community, okay? All right, and then last of all, we need to date patiently, in 1 Timothy chapter 5, we see the Apostle Paul giving instructions. He's, select, he's talking about selecting church leaders, leaders in the church, right, uh, elders. And one of the things he says, he says, don't be hasty, right? Don't be hasty. I think it's in verse 22. Don't be hasty. There will be some whose sins will be obvious, and yet there are still others whose sins will follow after. Okay? Same is true in dating. Someone might appear charming, kind, funny, might be, I don't know, super fun to hang out with, yet in time you begin to see some cracks in the veneer. Okay? You want to be patient enough to see how their character handles challenges and trials and different seasons. Okay? Okay? So you want to watch them. You want to watch them when things don't go their way. Right? You need to be in a position where you can say, man, hey, this thing did not go well for them. They did not get what they wanted. And man, they responded in such a kind and gracious way. You know? So you need to date patiently. You need to date in such a way where it's like, hey, I'm not going to... 
You know, I'm not chase. I'm not. I'm not going to chase after a, a ring here. I'm going to. I'm going to be patient. I'm going to wait until I see. I want to. I want to see the Lord at work in them. I want to see fruit of the Spirit in their life. I want to be. I'm going to be patient here. Okay. So, you want to watch them when they don't get their way. You want to see how they treat people that they aren't trying to date. And man, your respect and admiration and affection for them should grow as time passes, not decrease, you know? This is something that I really see in, in young women. There are so many young women that I feel like I've seen who are dating a guy who is an absolute doofus, <laughs> you know? And maybe they're, man, it's like their love and affection has, is not growing. You know, maybe it's just leveled off or maybe it's just taking a nosedive, Okay? So while you want to date patiently, you want to take all the time you need, but you also don't want to evaluate forever, right? If you've been dating someone for a year and you're really struggling to see the fruits of the Spirit in them, you're really struggling to see, man, a, some growth in them. I'm not trying to write somebody off here, but if you've dated someone for a year and that's the case, Man, it may be time to have a difficult conversation. It may be time to say, man, I just, this is not, this is not, we're not jiving, okay? Right, that makes sense? So you want to be patient, you want to take all the time you need, but then you don't want to evaluate forever, okay? So once again, where this is not a status, you, a status you kind of live in, it's a process you move through, okay? So, you need to date patiently. You need to see, I'm, I'm not going to go all in on this thing. I'm not, I'm not in a rush. Because once, once again, the temptation is going to be, you're in front of me. You're in front of me. So therefore, I've got like, if you, if you leave, there may, not, there may not be someone else. Right? That's going to be the temptation. If you, if you, if you bounce... Or if I say no to you, there, may not, there might not be somebody else, okay? And man, <laughs> I would encourage you, so as you look at this process, you need to be saying, hey, I'm gonna trust in the Lord. In, in, uh, in uh, Psalm 118, it says, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. So what does the Lord have for you? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But I do know that he is a good shepherd. He's good. He's kind. He's given you the wisdom to evaluate what is right. He's given you, the, he's given you his word. He's given us the wisdom to evaluate a potential mate, but he's also given us himself to lean on as we pursue him. Okay? So as we date, once again, these are principles that we need to to, to learn, to observe as we pursue Christ, okay? Anybody have any questions? Anything? Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray real quick, and then we are gonna be, we're going to be dismissed, okay? Father, we love you. Father, we're so thankful that in the midst of a lot of just uncertainty and ambiguity in a lot of ways that we just do not understand the outcome. We don't see the end. We don't see the finish line. Father, we know that we can put our trust in you. We can rest in you and you will be faithful. So Father, help us to lean into you. Help us to love you. Father, forgive us for the times we've, we've sought other people. We've looked to other people to fulfill us and satisfy us when they could not possibly do that. So Father, we ask that you would just help us, cause us to seek you lean into you and love you and that you would be so all satisfying to us that all other relationships would just seem dim in comparison and that father you've given us discernment and you've given us uh, a good gifts in singleness and you've given us good gifts in dating and in marriage so father help us to be good stewards of those things we pray this in jesus name amen